Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be going into some more animation as that was quite requested, quite highly requested. Um, I'm going to be showing about how to set up some animations with animation events, uh, calling functions from your animations and mentioning you know, why you would do this over just coding it manually. Um, it's pretty obvious but obviously I'll go into that. And then I'll show you some cool uses of it and then uses in my game uh, and hopefully that's okay some point in the future, maybe in the next few weeks or whenever I get around to doing it, obviously I've still got like a backlog of video ideas, um, when I've got the time I'll make like a mini series on animation so we'll actually like set up in Blender, we'll model something and then rig it and animate it and I'll go through that whole process but for now just to keep people happy I'll just do a simple animation tutorial. It's obviously simple for people who have done it before but not so simple for people who haven't so obviously I hope you learned something new, I'll just mention some tricks of the animator and things you should know and try and remember because obviously uh, I've learnt things over time just from testing around and getting annoyed with it. Uh, it is just quite a fiddly thing to work with but you know it makes games look amazing if you can pull it off well. So I want to start off by thanking my donators on Patreon, thanks to Michael, Paul Robinson, Fullball as we and Wesley. If anyone else would like to help out then the link is in the description below but apart from that let's get into it. So let's quickly maximize this. Um, this I guess I can kind of call this a little like update at the same time as you know me just showing how to do something. I'm using my game as an example because I already have some animations. Um, so I'll start off by quickly showing what I've done since the last video, so this should only take a minute or so. So uh, I've got the, you know, picking up items working again. Uh, I'm still gonna have to need, I'm gonna need either something where like I walk near an item, press E and it picks it up, or when you walk over something it notifies you. But anyway, you pick stuff up in your inventory, here it is. Uh, double click on uh, like potion for example, goes into hot bar because it's a consumable. I'll press slot. Um, six and it'll use it. Now there's currently no cooldown or anything like even for potions I want to add like a quick cooldown like maybe a one second or half a second thing just to stop you from accidentally like double tapping or spamming for it. Um, I should press one by accident. If you've got armor like you know whatever you can just double click it. Um, for some reason oh yeah I've been working on settings so my texture quality is currently low. Let's set that back to high. Apply. Okay. Um, there we go. I'm using some default sprites just for placeholders on some of the things. If you're trying to equip animation, uh, sorry, ammunition doesn't go anywhere because it, it just stays in your inventory and gets consumed. Uh, armor like this and this and stuff will just like go into your equipment. Then I need to sort out the equipment screen to actually like add stats and display stuff, but that's what I'm in the middle of right now. Spellbook I'm in the middle of as well. You can currently preview your spells, see what they do. Um, the unlock button is also what I'm working on right now to like take off um, spell points and check if you've got it already and equip it to your hotbar. So that's, that's all tonight and tomorrow's job. Um, I've manually just put Fire Blast and Gust on my uh, hotbar just to test it out, so obviously I can shoot off that and I can shoot off this and so on. So that all works, that's nice. Um, but yeah, let's get into the animation. Um, so, if I just stop this, go to scene 2 and just run it from here. Just making sure it all works, there's no errors or anything, I can run it from here. I should be able to if I've done everything right. Yeah, so what we want to do the only thing that's missing is the FPS counter because that started in the first scene, but that doesn't matter. So, um, animation, let's go... Alright, I want to press the Windows key to get out of this because escape pauses. Okay, so if I go scene and 3D and player, I'm missing a prefab there. Let's have to see what that is. I don't know what that is actually. Post processing? Yeah, we'll see. I'll sort that later. Um, we go to the player and as you can see he's animating the idle state that I made. So if we go to his uh, animation here, you'll see we have the animator. Now it's using an avatar. Most animations you use won't use avatar even though it might give you a default one when you import something. Whenever you import something externally it'll have an avatar by default. Um, so just quickly running over what these do. Okay so the top one you might know is the animated controller which is where you actually have your animation tree like this and you say what goes to where and when and why and all that lot. Uh, the avatar is to do with bone structure, as far as I'm aware, I just know it exists and I think I know what it does. It's also to do with avatar masking like I showed in the last video, so like you can make it so you can have two animations running at once on like different parts of your body. If for example you want your running animation to continue whilst your um, arm is throwing something for example, you'd have to make a separate animation, you'd have two running at once on different parts of the body. Uh, root motion is for a different kind of animation, so what we have here, when the player is animated, his collider and object stay in the same place, but the body moves. Root motion is where the player moving is actually physically the player moving. So what you might have is you might have like a jump attack that jumps up in the air and dashes forwards, and that is like the actual animation. So if you were to do that, uh, the benefits to root motion is it's easier to do things like that, for example, like dashing, dashes and stuff. Um, 
I don't want to say it's easier. You can still do it just as easy. Um, but there are like complex movements that you might want to have in root motion. Whereas non root motion gives you the ability to tweak movement completely with code. So my adding forces to push you in a direction or like just moving yours. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, setting direction stuff. Basically, doing it in code like this gives you more control. Uh, doing it like that is probably easier to do certain things. But most people use non root motion. Update mode. Now, this is something important I want people to listen for because I only learned this recently. So, um, basically, the three options are normal, animate physics, and unscale time. Now, if you go into documentation, you'll actually be able to see the. Oh, it's on my other screen. You'll be able to see what they all mean. Um, so, the one that I really care about is it these three here? No, it's here. So, um, normal, obviously, the default. Yeah, whatever. Animate physics. Is used with physics update, physic a uh, fixed update, and fixed update is called every physics frame rather than every frame, which means that um, as you see here, you should use this if you're animating motion of objects with physical interactions. Now, unscale time you should use quite a bit because what unscale time means is that the things that you're animating in unscale time, the animator keeps going when your game's paused is the main use I can find for it because when you're when you pause your game, you'll set your time scale to zero, right? If I bring this to the side. All right. If I press uh, tab like this or escape, as you see, the animation pauses, right? <coughs> <coughs> oh, the animation pauses. So, and the, the reason because animations go off the time scale of the game. So your game's normally at time scale one, so everything animates just how you you know you set it up to do. But the problem is, uh, when you're paused, you generally set it to zero because you know you don't want anything to run in your game. You don't want enemies to keep attacking you when you're paused or anything. Um, so you can freeze animations, particle effects, they all run off that. Now the thing is, let's say you have UI animations, that's the main use. You can't have them on the normal because your game's time scale is zero. So they won't animate and you'll get problems and you might be confused as to why the animation's not working. But you just need to make sure animators that you want to keep running when the game's paused or specifically when the time scale is zero, you want that to be on uh, unscaled time. So if I go to the player control and put unscaled time, it means that they're going to keep animating during the pause. Now obviously, I don't want that. Because um, as you see, it just looks a bit odd. Everything's pausing the scene, the player's still there just bobbing around. But there are uses of it. Um, if you want to keep basically anything you want animated, regardless of the game's pause or not, you want to put on unscale time. I haven't actually used animate physics. Maybe, maybe I should use it on my player. I'm not really certain. If anyone knows for definite, say so. I haven't had any problems with normal, but I can imagine why that would help. But it's not going to be the biggest problem. And then culling is to do with rendering, but. Um, that's like, uh, if you can't see it, should we render the animation stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. I think it's still on here. Um, whoops, that's just my recordings folder. Um, yeah, the animation's completely disabled when the renderers are not visible. I mean, to be honest, I don't see why you shouldn't have that. Um, cool update transforms, as far as I'm aware, I've just closed it, haven't I? No, I haven't. Um, Retarget, IK, and Retro, so disable when renders not visible. Always animate. Yeah, so basically don't have always animate. I don't see a reason why you would have always animate, to be honest. It's just not use, you, uh, not worth it. Cull transforms. Basically, if we can see them being updated, then we'll render them. Cull means to render. So culling mode is like rendering mode. Um, then I got my other scripts, whatever. And my scripts uh, speak to the parameters in here. So as you see, I'm going to press resume. I'm going to move around. And when I'm moving, we move from 0 to 5, right? Now, I could just set that value in the speed percentage, if you look up here. I could set that straight to 0.5 when I start moving. The problem was the blend tree wouldn't look great, which is obviously, I've been over it before, but I'll go over it again quickly. The blend tree is what makes it smoothly go from still to walking to running. So I see when I press to move, it quickly goes to 5, uh, 0.5, but not completely. And then if I press shift, it does the same thing up to 1. If I stop, we go all the way back down to 0. Because what I do is when I press like move, it sets the target to 0.5 and it lerps towards it, and obviously lerp means to like linearly, linearly interpolate, so it will get closer um, over time. The further you are away, the faster it will go to it, is basically that. You can lerp transforms, you can lerp numbers, like floats, integers, well you can't lerp, you probably can lerp integers actually, but you generally use it for floats and vectors, I find. Um, obviously jump, and then it's grounded, will set me back. That's probably not the best way to handle jumping, but it's the way I've handled it, and it works, I've not had a problem with it. Actually, no, I've had one problem, sorry, which I might want to look at now just to show you uh, <laughs> what it is. So if I uh, run or walk, if I do anything, jump, right, it works, yeah? If I jump and pause, right, and stop, I'll fall, to be expected. But if I am running, jump, 
pause and I hold my move key down, I'm holding down D right now. If I resume, I'll actually just be in the air. Um, not quite sure what this is. My speed percentage is zero, so my character's not moving. Uh, I'm just not falling. Now, the falling is uh, the Y. Now, if, if I let go, I just fall. I'll have to look into that. It's clearly something to do with the time scale being set to zero when I'm paused, but um, let's look at the blend tree quickly again. I've looked at it before. Um, I'll bring it back so you can see it. So the blend tree, this is where that number is, you know, the zero to 0.5 to full. And all it does is we've got three animations here. So this one is from uh, zero to 0.5 and then 0.5 to one. So when I'm zero, it's this one. And as I get closer to 0.5, we do more of the walk and then more of the run. Because uh, you can run two animations at once and it basically just averages out their keyframes depending on, well, it doesn't average it out. It d just depends on how much uh, you want, it depends on the weight. Because weight means like, you know, how much you do of it. So like, for example, if you've got animation on an arm and you have weight around the shoulder, then the shoulder will slightly move when the arm moves. If you have no weight on the shoulder, then it won't move whatsoever. And if you have full, then it would move with the arm, but obviously you wouldn't have that. So that's why weight painting uh, is a thing we'll get into when we do animation and rigging. It's a tedious process if you're doing like a proper skinned person with like joints. Like, cause this character that I got off um, well, I didn't get off. I, I watched his tutorials. I didn't just like copy the final thing because I wanted to learn as I'm going along because animation obviously Like my main thing is programming and I'm okay at like the UI design stuff and like knowing how it all works But animation is probably my weakest point uh, So I need to learn and this is how because I'm obviously like developing this on my own. So um, Yeah, I need to start learning and his tutorials are pretty good Sebastian Larg um, but yeah his character has like the arm and a joint rather than the arm connected to the shoulder so it's easier to do the weight painting for that to be honest it's very quick compared to normal um but yeah that all works now animation events so don't have any on my player i don't think uh, but i'll give you one use so um basically if you look at the animation down here we can't change this it's read only because it's actually reading it from our blend file because i animated it inside blender it doesn't let you tweak the animation in here um, I'm sure you could probably copy it and then tweak the keyframes, but I wouldn't unless you were doing something specifically for it. But if you're going to do some animation stuff, do it in the actual software you animated it in originally. But one thing you can do is we can go to the actual animator. So if I remember my way around, we've got, um, models. No, sorry. We've got a player folder player. Now we have player sword, player on arms. So let, let's say we go to player sword and go animation. <clears throat> and you see, we've got, this is the sword idle, which is what we're currently on. Now, if I go and bring it up on here, it doesn't want to come up on the inspector, actually. Um, maybe I have to stop the game. Maybe I have to open. Oh, I have to be back on layers, probably. No. Uh, base layer, blend tree. That's weird. Um, oh, here we are. Oh wait, I just clicked on the prefab. I'm an idiot. I was on the prefab, not the model. Um, so this is the imported file. Uh, and you'll see on here, we've got all the animations. Oops. Um, and here they actually are. You can view them all here. Whoops, I did not mean to change that. Ooh, revert. Okay, um, don't want to mess anything up. So these are the different animations I've imported. I mean, you can import them separately, but until it gets too many, I'm just going to do it through the same file. Um, but anyway, so what we have here is like, the run animation, right? And if you actually bring this up here, you can preview it. So we can preview the run animation, which is nice. Um, now, one thing you want to do when running is, or just in your game in general, you might want to add footstep sounds. Now, you don't want to have some stupid code where it's like, um, you know, counting when you start moving to try and guess when your footsteps are going to be, because there's no real way your game can know if your footsteps. I mean, you could add a stupid, like, I don't know, a collider on your foot to check if it enters the ground. Maybe someone would do that. It doesn't really make sense to me because the problem is colliders as well are a bit iffy when it comes to doing that kind of job. What you should do is you should do this animation. All right, so we've got our animation here and you look for when the foot touches the ground. Okay, so you might want a footstep, you know, around here, right? I know the foot technically touches here, but there, foot. So what you'd do is you see on the animation here, my white line is actually dragging that white line. So I could go for like this frame, right? And I can press, uh, what have they got on here? Uh, events there we go so actually it's on this timeline here so you pick a time so there and then this little white bookmark looking thing for the event you click add and what's what it means is it adds an event at that time so if i go like forwards backwards whatever that's that's added so if i click on that event 
I can have a function name flow into just string object. So basically what it means is on the object with the animator, keep, <coughs> keep in mind it has to be the object with the animator on, I might have some code with a function on a public function. And if I put the name of that public function, so footstep sound, and maybe I pass an in integer, you know, one or two, depending on if it's left foot or right foot, because you might have a different sound, something like tap, top, tap, top, tap, top, when you're running, I don't know. Um, so you might pass in zero, right? Um, for the left foot. And then you don't need to pass anything else in, okay? And then we go forwards um, to the right foot. Um, so wait, that's the left foot going down. There's the right foot going down, right? So on this one, I can be like new animation event, um, foot step sound, uh, integer one, right? Integer zero, integer one. And then obviously that keeps going forwards right to the end. When it starts off and does no one, so it's like tap, 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 tap. And the point is, what I, what I could do now is in my player thing, I could have a um, function called footstep sound. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly do this. Um, so if I apply that, so I've called it footstep sound like that. Just got to remember. So if I go back to the player and go to, I don't know, just anything on him, player controller. Just going to go right to the bottom. I'm going to add a function, public uh, integer step sound takes in an integer um, foot index I don't know whatever you want and then you can just say you know audio clip blah, 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 whatever but for this I'll just do debug dot log foot index I oh, know it's not an integer sorry it's a void but it takes an integer yeah um, okay now Let's give it a second to compile. Also, I'm um, hoping my microphone hasn't messed up this video. eBay says it's coming today, and uh, it's today, and it's not come. So, you know, gotta gotta be patient. It's around Christmas time, but anyway. Um, now, technically, technically, the player not nah, because I only applied it to the running or the walking. It might only work when I'm walking or running specifically, but we'll see. Um, if so, then I might have to do it on the other ones as well. So if I'm walking. There we go. So let, let's put collapse off. Okay. So I'm walking. I clearly didn't apply it to the walking animation. But as you see, actually, when I get to 0.5 speed, it actually it doesn't move on to the next animation, so it starts doing it a bit. The point is, it starts running one one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero. So you'd have, that's synced up to me running, right? As I stop, it stops, and I start running again one zero one zero one zero one zero. So I could do a separate footstep sound to play. For each foot so as i walk tip top tip top i know some, i know that's the sound not the sh not the sound that shoes make but you get my point um that's something i'll be implementing uh the reason i didn't already have it is because i don't have sound effects yet for feet but you get what i mean it's not too hard to implement it's quite simple um so yeah i've covered quite a bit in this video obviously the animator what each thing on it does why you should use it when uh gone over the blend tree again you know to recap or you know let people haven't seen my last video watch uh see how it works then I've gone into animation events, showing how to link that up to functions that are taking a variable. So I think I've covered, you know, at least three things this video. It's 18 minutes. So anyway, um, if you've got any more video suggestions, obviously leave them below. If you haven't already seen my post, then um, I'm doing like a YouTube intro kind of competition for people to make like a fan made intro. And I'll judge them and then pick the best and the best can be my actual intro. I'll obviously give credit and stuff like that. Um, if you haven't already seen my post, just go read them. There's more information there. If you haven't already joined our server, the link's in the description below. Uh, obviously, leaving a like and subscribing would mean a lot to me. And apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.